What's up YouTube? This is LDS Reliance. Today I want to do another video on a popular topic around here. I've done a couple videos about servers and home hosting in the past and they're one of my more popular topics and I get a lot of comments and and questions about it even though I haven't done a ton of videos on it. So today I want to go a little bit more in depth into the pros and cons, what you should be looking at if you are considering hosting a server at home. The first pro for hosting your own server at home, and these are in no particular order, but that is privacy. When you host a server at home, you are in complete control of the security of that server. You're not at the mercy of anyone else to safeguard that information. You're also not using a platform that is shared with other customers. I've had it happen several times in my career where I've been on a shared platform, a virtual private server or something like that, and another customer has been hacked or spoofed or uh, has been caught sending out massive amounts of spam and that has affected my service because we share the same IP address. So it's definitely something to consider. It's definitely a pro if you know what you're doing to be able to safeguard your own data it's better to do it at home. The second pro in favor of hosting at home is control, kind of going along the same lines as the privacy topic. You control all of the variables with the customer's experience. You control the hardware that your uh, server is running on. You control all the software that's used, whether that's open source, whether that's uh, purchased from a vendor. You control all the maintenance windows, you control the patching, you control what versions everything is running on. You are in complete control. Now obviously with great control comes great responsibility because you have to know how to do everything and we'll talk about that a little bit later. This is probably the single biggest reason that you would want to host your server at home is to have complete control. No more submitting a ticket and waiting for some admin to do something like power cycle your server, anything like that. If you want it done, you go and you do it. The third pro is very similar, but I think it's worth mentioning that you have unlimited choices to choose from. And with unlimited choices comes a lot better flexibility than when you're going with a hosting provider. Hosting providers and service providers in general are going to limit the choices down to what they do best, and that's that's a good thing because then you're getting a consistent experience, you're getting better quality of service. But when you're hosting at home, you don't need to worry about that because you are in control of the quality of service. So that gives you the ability to run open source platforms or software if you want, or even something that's in beta stage. Uh, if you think it's ready for prime time, go for it. Knock yourself out. But nowhere is this a bigger deal than with hardware. While there are certainly hundreds, if not thousands, of different combinations of hardware you can run when you're working with companies like Dell and HP, it's all business class stuff. And that's perfect when you're running a bigger business, when you want all those enterprise features and all the advanced stuff. But when you're running a small business and you have a very specific purpose for a server, you don't care about things like ILO and IDRAC. You don't care about some of that stuff because you're going to be supporting this from home. For example, I offer web hosting services to my customers and all of those customers are running on small servers that I built myself, running a CentOS Linux on Intel Atom processors with just a modest amount of RAM and basic RAID 5 hard drive configurations. And the total cost of those servers was under $500 each. Try to do that with HP or Dell. Which brings me to number four, which is cheaper, at least in the long run. Now look, we can all go out and get cheap, cheap, cheap web hosting. We've already discussed some of the problems that you have with privacy and some of those things. But even with cheap web hosting, let's say you have a server that you're hosting for $20 on some shared platform, you're going to pay that in perpetuity. You're never going to hit the break-even point. With home hosting, yeah, you're going to have to build a little bit of a server. Let's say you build a $500 server like mine, but in the long run, after about the second year, about the third month of that third year, you've broken even on that server. And let's say you want to put multiple customers on the same box, then it's even better because then you're hitting that break-even point even sooner. 
Now I will say there are exceptions to that and it's not always going to be cheaper. You're going to have to pay for a more expensive internet connection. You're going to have to mitigate things like power outages which can be expensive. So it's in all situations it's not going to be cheaper. This is not something that you do because it is going to be cheaper. You're going to make this decision because there are other benefits such as control like we've talked about. And last but not least, number five is you're going to learn a ton. You're going to, this is indisputable that you're going to learn a lot more doing this method than putting something in the hands of a service provider. Now don't get me wrong, there is a steep learning curve here and I had the benefit of learning from the company that I used to work for, the web hosting business, before I tried this. So it was a lot less risk for me uh, learning all the things that I needed to do to host a server at home than it would be for somebody starting from scratch. But if you can push through that monster of a learning curve and persevere, then you will learn a ton. It's something that will pay off dividends in your career. It's something that will look good on a resume. And it's, it can't be reproduced anywhere else. You're not going to get the same kind of knowledge in a classroom. Unfortunately, hosting a server at home is not all roses. There are some major drawbacks to this. Number one is that your internet connection is the major limiting factor. Most people have a serviceable internet connection, a broadband internet connection with a decent download speed. However, the upload speed is more critical or at least as critical for home server hosting. So if you have a 50 megabit download speed but only a 5 megabit upload speed, you're going to be in some trouble. You may be able to host some very light websites on that, but you're certainly not going to be able to stream media over that. The other thing to think about is you almost certainly have a residential internet connection instead of a business class internet connection, which means that your SLA, your response time for service is going to be less, and you probably don't have the option of buying a static IP address or a block of static IP addresses. Now there are some ways around the DNS issue with dynamic DNS, but it's still something that you need to consider. For me, it was a no-brainer to upgrade to a business class internet connection. Yes, it costs three times as much as the comparable residential connection, but my service is symmetrical, meaning my upload and download speed are the same, and I get much better response times. My ticket, if my service is out, my ticket goes to the top of the list for this particular company. So it was very well worth doing. The second major drawback for hosting at home is your power situation. If your power goes out in your home, what's going to happen? Obviously your server is going to go down. Now you can mitigate that a little bit with battery backups, but that's only going to last for a few minutes. So you need to make sure that whatever you're hosting on this server can afford to possibly be down for a little while, or you're going to have to invest even more money into something like a diesel generator or something to fall back on. In my opinion, if this is a mission critical application and you need super redundancy, don't do it at home. It's going to be extremely expensive. Number three is you have to do everything. There is no escalation team. There is no tier three support, whatever. Anything happens, you are on the hook to figure it out. For me, this isn't so bad because I'm a DIY guy myself and with the internet being the way it is, you can find the answer to almost anything. But if you're not persistent like that, you get frustrated easily, or you just don't want to invest the time and effort into learning those types of things, this is not a good option for you. And again, if you're hosting something that is mission critical, what happens when you go on vacation? What happens when you get sick? What happens after hours, you know, in three o'clock in the morning? Are you going to take phone calls about that? Going hand in hand with that, the fourth drawback to home server hosting is that you are the one bearing all of the risk. It's your job to make sure that backups are running. It's your job to make sure that all of the updates and security patches have been applied. What happens if your house burns down? What happens if there's a flood? All of these things are things that you need to think about before committing to hosting a server at your home. So in summary, this is a really complicated question without a clear-cut answer. I can't answer this for you whether you should or should not get into this. That's up to you to decide. What I can tell you is that I get a lot of personal satisfaction out of doing this myself, just like with any other DIY project. There's just something really satisfying about looking at something that you built yourself that is all up to you and you persevered and you came out on top. You can also have a lot of control and you can have a lot of flexibility and you can save a lot of money doing this yourself, but again, there's a lot more that goes into the decision. All right, so I think we've beat that horse to death. 
If you have any questions, be sure to email me, ldsreliance at gmail.com. But let's say you've gone ahead and decided that you do want to get into this. The next question to ask yourself is what it's going to take. What kind of hardware do I need? What kind of systems do I need? Again, that's a loaded question and it's something I can help you with, but I'm going to plan on doing a new video on that to help explore that topic, so stay tuned for that. That was kind of a long video. Thanks for sticking it through to the end. If you're new to my channel and you're interested in this topic, please hit subscribe.